Recently I released a video that explains how I successfully connected multiple monitors to one MacBook Pro. I've had heaps of questions about the gear I used to do that, so in this video I'll cover exactly what gear I used and how to get it yourself. So don't go away. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel where we review tech related to making YouTube videos and sometimes we do gear recommendations just like this one. So if you're liking this content be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. So a few months back I made a video explaining how I successfully connected my 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro to two external monitors. I was struggling to find a tutorial on how to do this myself and the ones I found were not particularly helpful so after some trial and error and more than a few ways dollars I came up with a solution. The video has been very popular because so many people out there were or are in the same boat. I've since had a whole heap of questions and comments asking me specifically what gear I used in my setup. So in this video I'm going to cover exactly the gear I used and I've also provided links to everything I cover in the video in the description below. So if you want to pick up the same gear that I use those links should make it a lot easier for you. And make sure you stick around because I'll also cover the additional gear that I use in my overall setup but don't cover in the original video. So let's get into it. First up, the dongles I use. Now as I explained in the original video you need one dongle per port per screen. The Macs don't seem to be able to support multiple monitors from one port. Now you obviously need to get dongles that work with the ports for your particular Mac. Mine for example is a 2019 MacBook Pro 16 inch and the ports are USB-C so I have USB-C dongles. If you've got an older laptop like for instance a 2015 model with a Thunderbolt port instead of USB-C then you'll need something like this which is a Thunderbolt to HDMI adapter. Now I'll put a link in the description below if you need one of those too. The first dongle I use is a Satechi branded aluminium USB-C adapter. It obviously supports an HDMI output because that's the cable that will come from one of the monitors. Now this is a great adapter because I can plug a lot of other gear into it as well like standard USB devices as well as SD cards. It's made of aluminium so the build quality feels really solid. My other dongle is an old HP dongle and I've tried and tried to find it but I'm pretty sure they're not made anymore. However I recommend this one as a replacement. It has an HDMI port as well as a bunch of other ports such as normal USB and SD card readers. Now more importantly it has a USB-C port that supports power pass-through. Now this means that once you plug the dongle into your laptop you can then plug the power supply for your laptop into the USB-C port of the dongle which means your laptop can continue to be charged. Next up are the cables I use from my monitors to the laptop. My monitors have an HDMI output so I use an HDMI to HDMI cable. One end plugs into the monitor output and the other end plugs into the HDMI input on the dongle or adapter. It's great quality, I particularly like how it's nylon braided so it's very strong and yet still flexible. Now my output is 1080p but these cables also support 4K if you need that now or in the future and it's pretty compatible with a wide range of devices, pretty much anything that has an HDMI input or output. So just double check which type of output your monitors have, if they're more than 5 years old they may not support HDMI output and you may need a different cable. These cables come in various sizes depending on the distance from your monitor to your laptop. My one is just over 3 feet long but you can get them in 6 foot, 10 foot, 15 foot and 40 foot lengths. Now also recently HDMI to USB-C cables like this one have become available and if you use one of these it means you don't have to have a dongle or adapter plugged into your computer. You can plug the cable directly into your laptop. Now I've linked a really good option down below in the description as it supports 4K should you need that now or if you don't it'll still work just fine with 1080p output but you have the capability for 4K if you need that in the future. Bear in mind though that whilst this is convenient it does mean that you can't use that computer port for anything else. So if you have a computer that doesn't have that many ports it might still be worthwhile using a dongle so you can attach other peripherals like mice, keyboards or any other USB devices. Now I've also had some other questions about the rest of my setup, like the type of monitors I have, how they're mounted, my keyboard and other peripherals. So I'll cover those off now and for convenience I've added links to everything in the description below. Firstly my monitors. Now these are nothing flash but they work well for me and they've been very reliable. Both monitors are the same and they are the HP E231 model. They're 23 inches and a 16 by 9 aspect ratio which makes them great for watching video as well as video editing. 
The monitors come with a stand, which you can use to rotate the monitor into a portrait aspect ratio if you need that. However, I've taken both of the monitors off their stands and mounted them to my desk using a twin monitor arm, which I'll cover shortly. The resolution is 1080p, so not 4K, and to be honest, for my purposes, it's absolutely fine. But if you did want a 4K option, I've linked down below a fantastic Samsung SH850 4K monitor. It's slightly larger at 24 inches and looks fantastic. It has almost no bezel on three of the four sides and also has the ability to rotate to portrait mode. It has both HDMI and DisplayPort outputs as well as other input options like USB-C. So that's a great option if you really wanted to upgrade your monitors. Link in the description below. Now to hold the monitors I use a double arm setup and the arm I use is this one. The Vivo Dual LCD Monitor Desk Mount. Most monitors come with a standard Visa mount on the back and this desk mount supports that so it's super easy to screw the monitors to the desk mount and it also comes with the screws you need so you don't have to muck around trying to find or buy anything yourself. It connects really easily to your desk with an adjustable desk clamp and will work well with any thickness of desk up to 4 inches. Now whilst my monitors are 23 inches wide, it does support monitors up to 27 inches wide. And because of the standard Visa mounts, you can mount one or both monitors in portrait mode if that's something you need to do. It comes with handy clips for the monitor arms as well, which means you can keep all of the cables to and from your monitors nice and tidy. Now I found this setup to be a great space saving way to do things because it means you don't have to use any of your precious disk space for monitor stands. Now as for what I put my MacBook on, I use a stand like this. It's a pretty basic design, but it's really heavy and robust and definitely worth the money. It gets your notebook off the desk so you can use the space underneath to put other gear like external drives and things like that. It also holds the computer at a really nice angle, so if you did want to type on it, then it feels really comfortable. You don't strictly need one of these, but I think it's a nice addition to your setup, and it works really well for me. Now I've also had questions about some of the other gear I use that I've got plugged into my MacBook, like external keyboards and mice. So the keyboard I use is a Satechi wired USB keyboard with a numeric keypad. Now I really like the way it looks because it's made out of aluminium, it feels very robust and solid. The keys actually remind me of MacBook keys, they're slimline, and the keyboard just feels easy to type on because of the scissor switch. Scissor switch. Scissor, scissor. Because of the scissor switch keys. There we go. The keyboard's also designed with Mac users in mind because it has command and option keys unlike regular keyboards. Now I really, really love this keyboard and I never get sick of typing on it. Again, I'll put a link in the description below if you want to pick one up, and they come in space grey and silver, just like the MacBooks. For my mouse, I use the Logitech MX Master 3 wireless mouse. It's a really solid mouse, it has lots of features built in, and that make my workflow that much easier. What do I mean by that? Well, for example, it has programmable buttons that you can use to save your most often used commands. So for video editing, I can save commands like Blade to one of the buttons so I never have to take my hand off the mouse. It has a 4000 DPI sensor, which means you can use it on any surface, including glass, and it tracks just fine. It's got a thumb wheel which I use to scroll or move through my timeline horizontally, as well as a regular scroll wheel. Now I reckon my productivity would have improved by about 40 to 50% since I've started using this mouse, and I thoroughly recommend it. Link in the description below. Now, if you wanted to zhuzh up your workspace, I also added some RGB LED strip lights to add a little bit of color to my desk setup. The ones I use plug into one of the spare USB ports on one of the dongles, and they get their power through that rather than having to have a separate power supply. They also have a remote control, making it super easy to change the color. Now, I'm a bit of a sucker for LED lights. They're heaps of fun. Can be used in a bunch of different applications, including behind TVs, furniture, and other areas. Now, these ones are super cheap, and look, they're just worth a go. If you make videos like I do, they can be used to add a bit of visual interest in the background. And look, who doesn't like RGB lights in the background? Now, if you want to see how I use all of this gear to connect my two monitors to my MacBook, then you definitely need to check out this step-by-step -step video where I take you through how it's all connected. I'll also cover a few rookie mistakes so you know what not to do, which will ultimately save you money. So click on the link on the screen, and I'll see you over there. Cheers, guys.